Wood carving is something human beings have been doing for uh, tens of thousands of years. So I like to see myself as just another uh, carver in that continuum. So I'm trained as a sculptor, but I think of myself primarily as an artisan working uh, with traditional materials and tools, able to do a job for order. But I also like to get into uh, doing my own work, and uh, when I'm not doing this to pay the bills, my own work is also wood carving. So there's a nice transition from the work that I do for money to the work that I do as a part of my uh, life's greater purpose. So this is where I live. I love living on a tree-lined straight in Palatin Village, West Philadelphia. Close to the Art Museum, source of plenty of inspiration. These pieces are part of my uh, um, graduate thesis show as a graduate student at the University of Montana in Mo Missoula. This is an oak limb. The tree grew in my parents' yard in Ohio and uh, had a branch coming off kind of had this fork piece and uh, I made it into a, uh, a hand that's reaching down and lifting up a smaller hand and uh, the title of this piece is pedagogy so the older larger hand is reaching down to help up the hand of the smaller younger one but if you go right up to the top of the piece, you see what's holding the whole thing up. It's not the older teacher that's holding up the structure, it's the student. Without the student, there can be no teacher, that the whole system is built upon those who are coming up. They need to have those above them to guide them, but we should never forget where the true power lies, and that's with the student and the coming generation. As a young child, I've always done painting and drawing, and my mother really encouraged you know, creative activities, and I knew I always liked art, but uh, at around eight years old, my family took a trip to Europe and visited some of the great museums of the world, and from that point on, I knew that I wanted to be around art. Whether I could be someone who made it or not, I knew that I wanted to have a career path that would keep me in close contact with art. Uh, these large pieces, these two busts, were done as uh, pieces in my graduate thesis show. Um, this is carved from a 200-year-old ponderosa pine. I've actually counted the rings from the heartwood right out to the sapwood and got to about 197 before I kind of lost track around the bark. So I assume that this tree was a sapling at the time that Lewis and Clark uh, pass through the Bitterroot Mountains where this tree grew. Um, this tree's origins predate uh, colonial settlement. So I, I like the emphasis on hand tools. This chisel that I'm using is a Japanese, just off the rack, ordinary Japanese carpenter's chisel, but it has a laminated steel blade which means that the shank and the body of the plane is mild steel and the face, just the thin layer on the front of the chisel is high carbon steel which takes a very sharp edge and will hold it. The problem is, is that you can't use that for the whole tool because it's too brittle. The whole tool will snap in half. Um, but this tool allows me to get a really clean carved finish without the use of sandpaper and um, I love the feel of pulling curls off of wood with uh, steel. These micro gouges, I really love. They're used for people who do animal decoys and, and sh miniature shipbuilding. And uh, I was really excited when I uh, learned about these tools and got my first set because they basically the same same thing as this, but on a much finer scale. You know, instead of a palm gouge or a gouge that you use with a mallet, it's, it's just a finger gouge. It's your fingertips that are controlling it, and all the pressure is applied just by using your fingers. And 
Right now I'm doing a commission for a private home in uh, Palm Beach, Florida. It's a multi-million dollar renovation from the uh, top down of a, a exclusive residence in Palm Beach and uh, these will be installed in a uh, dining room above built-in cabinets that will all have the same finish. In the end they'll get um, finished to match exactly the cabinetry that they're built to go into. And it's called the Swan House. I'm rendering his vision in two dimensions into a three-dimensional wood carving. This began as a laminated block of white oak that was uh, solid, thick, and uh, over the course of the past couple months I've been whittling it down to what you see before you, and I'm getting close to the end. Here you can see a piece that I've carved in a spalted maple, and uh, you can see that there's really uh, beautiful uh, variation in the, in the color of the wood. So um, a piece of wood this extreme could easily overpower a sculpture and become all about just the, the preciousness of the material. But um, this figure, this form, is something that I've been working on uh, as a series of, of marble carvings, and I decided to do it um, again in this vaulted wood. I call her a kore, which is a Greek archaic term for a female figure, female carving. So it refers back to the ancient tradition of carving the human figure. The nature of the hand tool is that all the power is coming from myself. I'm not plugged into another power source. Um, I'm not uh, creating an increased carbon footprint and blah, 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 blah. But um, I like knowing that the wood, that the carving has been made with the power of whatever I had for breakfast this morning and not transmitted across uh, power lines from another state or nuclear power facility or dirty coal plant. I really love working um, with the wood. I feel like each piece is a collaboration between myself and the tree that became the wood that I'm carving. So the growth patterns, even sometimes the decay, this piece is uh, spalted. The stripes are all created by a fungus that was in the wood after it was cut down. So the wood itself has a lot to say. It has a color, a hardness, a shape, uh, growth patterns. And what I bring to it is my own concept, a figure, a portrait, a likeness, um, or a gesture. And then I try to work with the wood. The wood tells me what it wants to be, and I try to go in and assert what I'm trying to make. And there's always this pushing and pulling where the wood is resisting what I'm trying to do, so I change my design, or the wood implies something different. And uh, I can take my idea and impose it on what the wood is naturally doing anyways. So there's a lot of back and forth between myself and the wood. With my own work, I like to leave um, the pieces a lot more raw. Doing this detail finish work is, is sort of against my nature. Um, typically, I like to leave the evidence of the tool marks very apparent on the surface of the work and uh, not use sandpaper or other you know, abrasives to clean up the work. I think that the surface left by the chisel is preferable. And uh, so my own works are much rougher, more raw. Doing figurative carving is, is the thing that I love most. Carving human figures, I think they're the most relatable. But I enjoy doing this architectural stuff and decorative stuff as well. It's just given my druthers, I would probably focus just on carving figures. At 20 years old, I knew I wanted to make wood sculpture for the rest of my life. I also knew that in order to do that, I'd probably have to work every other type of job in between. So I've worked in construction, I've worked in a bakery, I've worked in a grocery store, I've taught, and all the things that I've done 
were as well as carving. So I've always been a carver and I've done these other things to make ends meet. And um, now I'm at a point after over 20 years of carving where that's my primary source of income. And I feel really fortunate to have made it through to this point.